Hi everyone and welcome to Hope in the Pain. I'm glad that you've joined today and no matter what situation this finds you in, whether you're experiencing some physical pain, some mental pain, some emotional pain, dealing with your mental health, um, some difficult situation, I am glad you're here and I just want you to find some hope by the end of this podcast. Today, I'm going to focus on a recent situation for me. And first of all, I'm going to start with a story. A couple of weeks ago, um, my family went off and they um, went on an adventure, um, a day trip that I wasn't able to go on because of how I was feeling. And I've got to tell you, there are a lot of things I feel like I miss out on um, when I am dealing with pain in my life. And a lot of times, you know, I deal with that pretty well. I work on something else. I uh, do something at home. Uh, Maybe my mom comes over and hangs out with me at home. But um, I usually find something that I feel like I am having a good day as well, um, even though I'm missing out on something. But for whatever reason that day, it hit me really hard. And before long, I found myself crying and not just a few tears welling up, but really crying. And, um, you know, I didn't feel good the rest of the day. And that was obvious why, because I had been so emotionally upset about not getting to go on this day trip. It was on that day that I thought, you know what, I'm going to go talk to somebody. I have a lot of friends I can talk to. I have family members, but I had never yet been to a counselor in order to talk about the things going on in my life related to my MS. I have a friend that actually had given me the name of a counselor that she recommended, which is something I really wanted. I, I didn't want to just, you know, go and Google a counselor. I wanted to know there was someone I could go talk to that was highly recommended by someone I knew, someone that was trusted by a good friend of mine. And so I made an appointment to go speak with her. And um, within a week, I found myself in her office. Now, when I found myself in her office, um, I didn't quite know where to begin. And so I kind of babbled out a few things, right? And I don't know if that is uh, typical when you go talk to a counselor. Um, I didn't take a list, which obviously for me, um, if you know me, You wouldn't have been surprised if I took a list, but I did have a few things I knew I wanted to talk with her about and try and find some resolution or some good ways of dealing with things in my life that were just causing me a lot of frustration. In a very kind way, she listened to me go through kind of a laundry list of things that were bothering me because of uh, the situation, the pain I deal with with MS, and uh, the the other symptoms I have. Um, after I kind of just kind of babbled through a lot of these things, it was really interesting because as I look back now at it, she was able to really kind of identify and pick out the uh, different things she heard that I was either repeating. So um, it really kind of showed that was bothering me most, or she was picking out things that she could kind of help me quote, reframe and think about in a different way. So what I wanted to share with you today is I wanted to share with you my experience in talking with her, some of the things that I worked through with her, some of the things that I'm going to go back and talk with her about more, all in hopes that you will find hope in that, Um, whether it leads you to go talk to a friend, whether it leads you to have some things you want to pray about, whether it leads you to want to go talk to a counselor yourself. So let's dig in and uh, let's look at the ways that I found myself um, being kind of a mess, uh, kind of a a dumpster fire, if you if you will. So the first thing I want to share with you is the issue I had thinking through the fact um, if I'm going to keep my job or if I'm going to find myself 
um, going ahead and kind of retiring, um, going on disability leave or on leave long term, leaving the company that I worked for for a number of years. And I have to tell you, um, the thing that she picked out is that I was uh, telling her that I felt kind of stuck. Either I I worked right, I kept my job, or I was just in a position that I was doing nothing, which is very contrary to my nature. I remember her exact word. She said, well, let's reframe that. You know, just because you may um, choose to not, quote, have a job anymore, right, and and work at a job doesn't mean it's either or in, in the way of working versus doing nothing, right? I was uh, pegging it as that. And she was trying to help me see that even though um, I'm most likely not gonna be able to keep my job, we'll see as my leave um, comes to an end here soon, that that didn't mean um, there's nothing I can do, right? That didn't mean that it was taking away all of my worth. I looked at the word as worthless as worthless less, right? That if I didn't have a job, I was worth less. And she wanted me to reframe that and see that that was not true. And so we talked about that some more. And it just kind of helped me um, give me some points to come home and think about that you know, there, there are still things I do, right? I, I work on my home. I, I have relationships with my family. I have relationships with my friends. Um, I'm doing this podcast, which is becoming more and more important to me. And so we looked at those types of um, things that I still have in my life that are worth a lot. So just because I may end up not having a quote, job, a paying job, does not take away my worth. And so it really did help me reframe and start thinking about that in a different way that, yes, um, things are changing for me, right? But that doesn't mean I'm worthless. That doesn't even mean that I'm worth less than I was. And so um, her giving me kind of the principle of reframing different things and, and looking at things that they're not just either or, right? There are other options as well was super helpful. You know, I've shared with people the principle of reframing before. When I did work um, in my job, I um, thought about reframing all of the time, right? Because things would come in my email box or on a on a um, call, right, a a meeting. And if I just took them for what they were, maybe that would be frustrating to me um, how things were explained to me or what I was being asked to do. But I found that I can reframe really anything to make it more of a positive for me and a positive for what I'm doing or working with another person. I want to see what you can reframe today, right? What's really frustrating you, right? If you make a list of the things that are, are bothering you, um, what kind of pops up in that list to the top or maybe is repeated, right? And how can you reframe that? And instead of looking at it as either this or this, you can find some other options that are really going to help you look at that situation more positively or go through that situation more positively. So that was the first um, out of four that she really helped me with. The second one was... um, as I talked with her about some conversations that my husband and I are having, right? So things are changing for us. Number one, I am on leave, so I'm not at work right now. Um, And whether or not that is long-term, that is some changes for us, right? There have been many changes in our life because of the pain and because of the symptoms of MS that I'm going through. Um, You know, I've said before, my husband's been a trooper through this, right? He has seen me through um, so many uh, different doctor's appointments, going down in the Mayo Clinic um, a year and a half ago, and he has been there through that. But you know, as he's been through that with me, and as we have had changes come in our life, there's a lot of conversations we've had to have about how we're going to work with our money now, how we're going to work... um, you know, in our relationship now, whether it's um, communication or, you know, what we do, you know, 
I am not as social as I used to be, unfortunately, and I really am hoping that will change at some point. But because of the pain I've experienced, we've spent a lot more time at home in the evenings, and that's been something he's had to deal with as well. You know, I started off this podcast sharing the story of that Saturday morning when I didn't get to go on um, the the day trip and, and how frustrated and upset I got over that. Y- you know, that's another change in our relationship, right? Um, you know, how are we going to handle those types of things? I definitely don't want him sitting home all of the time, right? I don't want his life to stop, even though mine is slowed down. And so as I shared some of those conversations um, that he and I are having about that, she what she picked out of that is that I need to work to keep those conversations open. And that was a word she used. She used the word, keep the conversation open. I guess that's a sentence, not a word, but that's what she said. And you know, I think that applies um, in so many different situations and not only if you're married and not only with your husband, if you are right, maybe it's at your job, maybe it's with your children, maybe it's with your spouse, maybe it's with a friend, who knows um, what that situation is. Maybe it's with your doctor or a healthcare provider. Maybe it's something, a situation, and you need to work. You need to take on uh, the responsibility to keep that conversation open. And keeping that conversation open, um, along with that, and what I have really found um, with my husband and my close relationships, is I need to be careful about how I keep that conversation open. You know, I need to think about how that person can best hear it, right? Um, Which is not always the way I can best hear it, right? Um, I know um, instead of like, uh, if we're talking about finances, for me to say to my husband, hey, can we have a weekly meeting about finances is not really how he views it. He is more likely to view it as, you know, we have a plan And we can periodically um, take a look and see how we're doing with that plan. But he's very much guided by that plan where I am more the person um, to catch him off guard. Hey, can we talk about this? And so um, it's good for me to think about how it's easiest for him and best for him to to hear that. So I've really thought about that. And and again, this is the second um, uh, big idea that I took away from talking with um, the counselor recently is how can I keep conversations open in a positive way, right? I don't want to nag my children. I don't want to nag my husband. I don't want to overstep my bounds with my adult children, right? I want to keep the conversations open. The third big idea that I talked about with the counselor is um, there are some frustrations I've had with a couple of people. And I um, I, I just had a chance to share those in a safe environment, right? And I realize objectively that some of the reasons I experience frustration is because of what I'm going through and it because of my limitations. But those are still feelings I have. And those feelings of frustration, um, I want to be real careful how and where and to who I share those with, right? So this frustration is not with my husband, just to make that clear. I just got done talking about he and I and how we um, relate in communication, but I want everyone to know I'm not talking about my husband right now. But there are some frustrations I have felt. And you know, I've come to realize I want to be careful how I share those. And it was great to talk to this gal because she is not friends with who I'm friends with. She's not in my family. So if I share these frustrations with her, it's not gonna go any farther. And you know, I think that's super, super important because I don't want my momentary frustrations to affect my relationships. I don't want to gossip about someone or badmouth someone, uh, maybe let's say to one of my friends, and then that influences their view of this other person, right? Now, sometimes there are things we need to deal with, right? But these, for me, were just feelings I had, negative emotions, and again, a lot of them are because where I'm at in my life. One thing that was really interesting when I shared these frustrations with her is I saw these negative emotions as a huge deal, a huge problem in me relating to that person. But you know what she said to me? She said, we can like someone and have a good relationship with them, but not 
like something about them. That is, of course, something we all know. But in my kind of frenzy and how I made a molehill, right, into a mountain, a mountain out of a molehill, I just was kind of forgetting that. Or I wasn't letting that kind of seep into me and really make that something I knew so I could operate on that. So it was so helpful again. And this is one of the great things about seeing a counselor. We can share emotions we have. And again, they don't impact or negatively impact people in our lives. And one thing about that is I came home and I thought about those negative emotions. And you know what? Those negative emotions are pretty much gone. Getting them off my chest was really what I needed to do in order to not be impacted by them, not let them affect me. And the great thing about that is they're not going to affect my relationships with others. Either that person that I had frustrations about or others in my life. That is a real gift a counselor can give us. You know, we can go in, we can share frustrations, whether it's about ourselves, another person, a situation in our life, whatever it is. And what I realized is I came home and I thought about that. You know, I made my little list, just like I'm reading now, of the things that I really got out of that counseling session. And what I took from that is that if that continued to bother me, those negative emotions about this person, I would have had to take steps to um, either talk with her more about a way to deal with them or um, go to that person, figure out a way to resolve them. But again, they're pretty much gone. We'll see if they come back, I guess, but they're pretty much gone. And so just sharing them, getting them off my chest to an objective third party was really, really helpful. And I think that's, again, a great gift of going to a counselor. The fourth thing I want to share with you, the last thing on the list, is the the one item that I'm going to go back and talk with her about. And that is about coming full circle back to that story I told you about that led me to go talk to her in the first place. And that is when I get super, super frustrated and upset about my limitations, right? In this case, it was not being able to go on this day trip. But you know, um, there are other things that can pop up uh, about my limitations and about being um, being um, a person with multiple scler- sclerosis. I always say MS because I have trouble saying that word, uh, saying it right at least. But you know what can happen on those days when I get really down about something is that I mentally kind of what I say is spiral downward is that I just kind of fixate or dwell on these negative thoughts uh, about the limitations I have, about the pain I'm dealing with, about uh, just the other symptoms I have that are just so frustrating to me because of what I'm not able to do anymore. Um, and, and just all the other ways it affects my life. So that was something that we talked about and we discussed, but I didn't feel like um, really got kind of to the heart of the issue of, of, of where I need to be in, in knowing how to deal with that situation. It doesn't happen a lot. It does happen. And when it happens, like I got so upset and I was crying and I was just so frustrated. I called my mom and I was crying. Um, and, and that doesn't help me, doesn't help her. And it just makes my symptoms worse. You know, one of the things that I have found that helps me in those situations is to look for the positive, right? Um, and there was some positive that day, right? Um, I, I went to coffee with my younger son who was also home and that was just awesome, right? So uh, there were some things like that, that that made it a good day. But for that morning, I was really upset all morning. And you know, my husband felt bad, right? He knew I was really upset. And, um, again, you know, so he's going on this, um, day trip knowing that his wife is just at home so sad and I don't want him to have to deal with that. Now, obviously there's going to be these times that we have to deal with these things, right? I mean, I have MS. MS is not going away, right? So this is something we're going to have to deal with. However, 
I know, I just know, and I'm so excited to go see her again because I know she's going to be able uh, to help me talk through that and to have some things that are going to help me deal with that. So instead of spiraling downward, I will be upset, right? But then I'll be able to get back on a positive track without feeling so bad for so long. You know, I wanted to share all of this with you because I know if you're in a tough situation, either physically, mentally, or emotionally, if you're dealing with a tough situation, you most likely are having times like this too. When, when something just hits you and I don't know, all of the frustration you felt, um, you've been trying so hard to be positive, you've been trying so hard to do the best you can, but at some point, whether by frustration or exhaustion or whatever, it just hits you and, and you just emotionally become so upset, it's hard to get back on a positive track. And whether there are some of these uh, different principles that my counselor shared with you that can be helpful to you, or whether you decide to go see a counselor, I want you to know there are these different ways that can help you deal with situations. Sometimes we're in a situation that is going to go away, right? It's something we go through and it has an end. That is awesome, right? Sometimes it's a situation like mine that you're going to have to deal with for the rest of your life. So take some time to consider what would be helpful to you in the situation you're in. At the end of every episode, I want to leave you with words of hope. A couple weeks ago, a um, couple episodes ago, I should say, um, I read Romans 15, 13. On the last episode, I read some words from the um, song Stan by Rascal Flatts. Both those are super, super um, hopeful. What I want to do today is I want to read you some words from one of my favorite authors, Max Lucado. And this book is called, very appropriately, Unshakable Hope. Let me read you these words. People are dying for lack of hope. Secularism sucks the hope out of society. It reduces the world in a few decades between birth and the hearse. Many people believe this world is as good as it gets. And let's face it, this world is not that good. But people of the promise or people that follow God, believe in Jesus, have an advantage. They determine to ponder, proclaim, and pray the promises of God. They filter life through the promises of God. When problems surface, they can be heard telling themselves, but God said. I wanted to read that to you. That is just in the first few pages of Unshakable Hope. And, you know, it brings up a really good point. There's so many verses in the Bible about what's true about God and the promises of God, which relate to all of us no matter what situation we're in. It's those promises that I want you to build your life on, to build the foundation of your life. Now, I'm not sitting here saying, just pray about it, just read your Bible, and everything will be okay. You know I'm not saying that because I just got done telling you how a counselor helped me and how I know, how I have hope that she's going to help me some more with uh, the spiraling downward when I get super, super upset about my situation. So wherever you're at, I really know there is something that I just shared that can be helpful to you. Something that can help you to make the most of the situation you're in. And those are the words I want to leave you with today. Make the most of your situation. Make the most of this life you've been given. And join me again on Hope in the Pain.